going to move, move along this way. We're trying to get an entire truckload to go over to the museum this afternoon. With plant succession, these little ones underneath would probably within several years just plain die out because there's not enough light for these maples. So that's the way that the plant world really works is that the shade from these bigger plants ultimately shade out and and kill all the competitors. I started working with Patrick about two and a half years ago at Middlebury College. I met Patrick five or six years ago. The process started about three weeks ago to make this sculpture. Saplings are full of water. They can be quite heavy. Patrick has this amazing way of being able to know how much he needs from a space to be able to bring it in. We transported the six down here. Initially, we laid them out so they could dry. And then because it's an indoor piece, we had to bug bomb the sticks before putting them up. So we bought the sticks out, put an application of flame retardant, let them dry, and then put them back into the building. Yeah, all the sticks that we had labored all these days to put inside, we then had to drag outside. We had to flip them around in the sun so that they would dry out. It's really hard work, but it goes fast. Generally, my, my food intake goes way up because I'm burning about 4,000 calories a day. I'll show you what we are um, thinking about doing. I'm, I've been working on, on this concept. Let's see if I've got another example. I've got a before and after. So this is in France. I'm just trying to get the basic idea of, of how it would occupy its space in the scale of the piece. I usually make some word associations with the site. It doesn't matter how silly they are. I have uh, turmoil and starry nights, broad strokes and eddies, and outers and innies, and star charts and tempestuous and congestion and rampage and flyaway. So those would give me some ideas about how to go about thinking about this piece. It would be great if it developed a, a lot of momentum and force as you went um, down the wall itself. I think it would be uh, kind of exciting if, if we were able to start at the base here and get a, a look like we had a big vine that started growing here. And, uh, the, it started the matrix of this piece. So then it would develop force as it goes down the wall, the, the outer edge here, the upper edge as it might flash up into the coffer ceiling. So we want a, a wild rumpus to begin. I longed for a Patrick Doherty piece in the museum. I remember the day that we called Patrick to look at the wall in a raw space with the architect. He said, yes, I can imagine that there can be something quite fabulous. He immediately, I think, began to envision this piece because at, even at that point, he was talking about how it, it would emerge from the earth, it would emerge from the floor, and it would sweep across the wall and it would have rhythm and it would soar into the light. Well, the one at the very end goes up again. That's what we're working on now. He started out in clay, but I believe the first class he had with me was a beginning design studio. And he did good clay work, but his heart, I don't think, was really in it the way it was in his, uh, what I would call the stick world. The work that he's done is, is an evolution of his house and the way that he lives and the way that he works and the, the environment that he's created out there in North Orange County. It started when he was a child and he had four brothers and sisters that grew up with him. We lived in a wooded area in Southern Pines. Pat was sort of their leader and he had all sorts of ideas and he took them all through the woods there and helped them build forts. I guess this was the beginning of his tendency to build things. And I've seen his work become looser, more lyrical, uh, more expressive, more self-confident. All the things that you 
hope to find as an artist uh, finds his most mature voice.